As a physical therapist, I've seen so many patients that had this huge vacation planned only to be ruined by back pain, neck pain, knee pain, and all the pains. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some easy tips on how to prepare your body for travel so you never have to sit out on that next epic adventure. Let's start with on the plane. Tip number one, fix your posture. I'm a physical therapist, so yeah, I'm gonna talk about posture on a plane. So many of my patients have told me that their pain started when they were sitting on the plane, and that makes a lot of sense. On those plane seats, you're crammed into a tight space, you don't have a lot of leg room, it's really hard to recline back, and you're out of your normal routine. Unless you're gonna pay for some premium seats or buy business class, it's really hard to stay comfortable. But try these tips instead. First, let's get some support for your back. So grab your jacket or whatever you have on you, and you're gonna make a rectangle angle and we want it to be longitudinal so eight inches down if possible six inches across and not too thick you're going to take it and put it right in your curve of your back right here right above your butt crack and then you just sit with it and it shouldn't be too big basically when you put a support at the low part of your back you're preventing that posterior pelvic tilt or the rounding of your pelvis going down and what this does when you have it nice and supported right here, you're supporting your disc, your muscles, your ligaments, and so much more. Next, if your feet can't touch the ground, try supporting your feet by putting your feet up on your personal item or get an inflatable footrest. If you've ever sat on a bar stool and had your legs hanging off without support for an hour, you'll start to notice some discomfort. Well, the same thing goes with the plane. If you support your feet, you support your back. Next, support your arms and elbows by placing your bag on your lap and then placing your arms on that item. When you support your elbows and your forearms, you are supporting your neck. Next, support your neck with a good neck pillow. Now, I don't really like the cushiony ones like this only because I'm not a light packer, so it ends up like falling on the floor, and if it's on the floor, I'm not gonna end up putting my face on it. So if you did have to get a neck pillow, try to get something where it has this little raised ridge. When you put it on, it actually supports your neck just a little bit more because of this raised surface here. Instead, what I use is the turtleneck pillow because it's machine washable, it's compact, it's comfortable. I'll be sure to link this below, but I really like it because I found that my neck was really supported. All right, the next tip is adjust your sleep routine. Earlier this year, I went to a conference on sleep. We dove deep into how your body recovers during sleep and how important it is to regulate your body through sleep. When you're traveling, it's so easy to get hit hard with jet lag. If possible, a week before your trip, try to get used to sleeping a little earlier or waking up a little earlier or vice versa depending on which direction you're traveling. A good place to start is 30 minutes to one hour per day. Also, try not to deprive yourself of too much sleep before getting on the plane. Banking on being able to sleep on the plane might be really risky as there may be a lot of distractions that prevent you from falling asleep. I already talked about my favorite travel pillow, but if you're in the market for a really good blackout eye mask, I recommend this one. This is from Manta Sleep and I love it because there's removable eye mask. It's super soft and washable and when you put it on, it doesn't touch your eyelashes. There you go, it looks just like this. Check out circadian rhythms, but basically when it's dark, your body sleeps better. If you do need peace and quiet, I actually love using my AirPods Pro and I'll actually put them a noise cancellation and then put some sleep casts on or some relaxing music. But when we are in the hotel, we usually just use our portable white noise machine that looks like this. Long story short, do whatever you can to get some good quality sleep. Okay, next tip is to bring the right gear. Traveling throws you out of your normal routine, so here are some ideas to help make you feel more comfortable. First, bring an empty water bottle with you and fill it up before you get on the plane. Staying hydrated during travel can help you poop and improve digestion and other body functions. It can also improve your mood and help with fatigue. Second, bring your favorite snacks and have them be easy access so you don't get hangry. Third, if traveling tends to make you more sore and achy because of the bed you're sleeping on or you're getting too much activity or not enough activity, then it's really important to have the appropriate tools in order to help with that muscle tension and achiness. Some of my favorite items I love bringing for travel is this muscle roller and this massage ball. This is called a tiger tail muscle roller and it's basically a handheld portable foam roller. I have the 18 inch one for home and I usually bring the 11 inch one with me for travel because it's a little smaller and more portable. We use these guys in the clinic all the time and outside the clinic and these make really good holiday gifts or birthday gifts for whoever needs a little bit of work on their muscle tension. I love using this on my quads, IT bands, adductors, and calves because I can get pretty tight when I'm sitting or if I'm walking a lot. And then I have this massage tool ball thing and this is called the Naughty Tiger and I love it because you know how you're trying to give yourself a massage and your fingers get kind of tired? Well, this fits perfectly in your hand and you just take it and roll it 
you know, it's not really rolling. You're just putting pressure like through your clothes, but it feels so good. You're just releasing all that tension. It kind of gives like pressure, like someone's like putting their elbow on you, but you can go lighter if you want. So this is really nice because you could just keep it with you on your carry-on and just like slide it on your leg or massage your chest through here. I also like sitting on it where my, where my butt is. So I get that piriformis muscle or I'll put it right underneath my hamstring. I've tried a lot of other brands inside the clinic and outside on Amazon and you know, like other like health stores. And I just keep coming back to the Tiger Tail brand because of the good quality. So I'll be sure to link this below. When you are traveling, it's also super important to carry a bag that's really comfortable and it's not going to make your back sore or your shoulder sore. So I really like over the shoulder bags. I like this one. This is a Lululemon Everywhere belt bag, large two liter. And then this is my favorite Kavu bag. So this is like a bigger version of a shoulder bag and it's just very ergonomic and very comfortable. So I also review these two bags in the other travel video. All right, next tip, and that is to release the pressure. Now, we just talked about sitting posture on the plane, but no matter how perfect your sitting posture is, nothing makes up for lack of movement when you're on the plane. Your body was designed to move. Whenever I think about prolonged sitting for work or for travel, I always think of a balloon. You can probably add a lot of air to the balloon without noticing any issues. However, the bigger the balloon gets, the pressure builds up and it starts to get unhappy. However, it doesn't matter how much air you add to the balloon as long as you release air here and there. Add air, subtract air. Now I want you to think of your body like this balloon. Lack of movement is like adding air to the balloon. But every time you get up to move around, that's like releasing pressure from the balloon. When you are cramped on a plane, the pressure is going to build up. But as long as you get up as often as you can to release the pressure, you will be just fine. Release the pressure by standing up, stretching, walking around, going to the bathroom on the plane, and then your body will be so much happier. Like my physical therapy professor said, motion is lotion. Keep your body happy by staying mobile before you get on the plane. If you have a long layover or you got to the airport really early, walk around, stretch, or stand as much as you can. Also, try to snag an aisle seat if possible so you can get up as much as you want. Ideally, getting up for a few minutes every hour while you're awake is the goal. Another thing that helps prevent achy and tired feelings in your legs is getting good compression socks. These are my favorite compression socks because they have 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury, which is a measure of pressure, and these these are just so comfortable. I wear these every day for work and on the plane they make a big difference. In my travel video that looks like this, I actually go through a deep review of why I love them so much. Just by getting up to release the pressure can decrease so many musculoskeletal pains that I see every day in the clinic. Get up and get up often. Alright, next tip. Prep your body. When we were in Japan, everyone walked everywhere. It would not be fun to be that one person that's limping in the streets of Tokyo because they irritated their knee. That would be a bummer. The biggest mistake that a lot of my patients made was they didn't prep their body right for travel. Your body is made for routine. If you're going to be walking a lot during your vacation, then prepare your body and walk a lot when you're at home. You want to walk on cobblestone for hours in Europe when you're only used to walking on marble and cement? Then you're going to have to start walking on some grass, some trails, and maybe some gravel to prepare for that Europe trip. If you're going to be walking in heels for a long time, then you have to practice walking in heels at home. These are just some examples, but I recommend giving your body a month or so to adjust prior to your trip. If your lifestyle is only level 5, but your vacation requires you to be a level 8, then get your body to that level 8 a few months before your trip and prepare your body. The next tip is to limit your stress. Keeping your stress down will keep cortisol levels at bay. This is important because increased cortisol levels can affect healing time and inflammation. Keep your stress down by planning ahead of time, and I don't mean just getting to the airport early, although that can help. Everything I mentioned before can help decrease stress. When you sleep better, when you feel better, when you keep your body active, all that can decrease stress. Decreasing stress means building margin around your trip. I actually have a Google Sheets travel budget and planner that I'll link below. It's completely free and I'll also put the instructions down there as well. But what it covers is how to make a travel itinerary, how to budget, how to track your expenses, make a to-do list and a packing list, and that can all give you some more margin so you can decrease stress around your vacation. So many people go on vacation and travel to escape the craziness of life. If you manage your time well beforehand and decrease stress, not only will your body thank you for it, but you will also enjoy yourself a lot more. Another way to make your body happier is to stretch often. Here is a video on my favorite stretches to do when traveling on a plane. I'll link it right here. 